Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Now I get a ton of inspiration by looking at home decor on high-end sites. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can recreate some of those higher-end looks on a really small budget. Sconces and wall lights are super popular right now. Everybody's wanting to add these into your house, but sometimes you may not know how to wire it in. So I wanna give you an option that you don't have to wire in at all and it's really affordable. So for this project, you're going to need one of their drying racks, a napkin holder from Dollar Tree. You're also going to need two puck lights from Amazon. I'll link them for you down in the description box and a placemat. My placemat, I actually purchased at Walmart. You want to get your drying rack from Dollar Tree because it's definitely going to be a little bit more flimsy and bendable. So I'm going to start with my drying rack, pushing it around my napkin holder to create a nice arch. Once I have it in the right shape, I need to attach the drying rack to my napkin holder. So I started this by adding in some floral wire. And this held it okay, but then I went in with a zip tie and that worked even better to secure it in place. Once you have your base in place, now you can come in and wrap it around the edges. So I found a place mat that fit almost perfectly. I ended up having to cut some of the drying rack down at the bottom. Then I'm just going to wrap the place mat around and I'll hot glue it in the back. I purchased my puck lights in a pack of two. You're gonna to have to put a battery in them to make them work. Now to attach these, you're gonna use the command strips that were provided. I'm gonna put them on the back of my puck lights. Then I'm gonna put one on the top of my napkin holder and the other one, I'm going to flip the sconce upside down and put it on the bottom part of my napkin holder. That way, when they're turned on, you're gonna have light illuminating from the top and the bottom. They're touch lights, so all you have to do is touch them to turn them on. You could also get remote ones that are a little bit more expensive if you wanna go that route as well. To attach these to the wall, all you have to do is put some command strips. And here's how it looks on my wall. I want to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. Now, if you're not familiar with Skillshare, it's an online learning community that has thousands of inspiring classes. Skillshare is for anyone who loves to learn and loves to explore their creativity. I'm always so excited when I get on Skillshare's website because they're constantly updating their classes, so I'm always seeing new classes that I want to take. One of my favorite things to do at night to unwind and relax is to take a Skillshare class. The last one I took that I absolutely love was called Plants at Home by the Plant Queen. I realized when taking this course that plants are so much more than just decoration. They really add to your environment. And in the course, I learned like what plants were best for my space, how to decide what plants to add. I also really appreciated the section where they discussed three plants that were great for beginners because I feel like I am a beginner. So I'm definitely gonna be picking up a couple of those plants. I already have one of them. Skillshare courses are ad-free, so you can definitely zone in and focus on the course. Now, if you'd like to check out Skillshare, go to their website, see what it's all about. The first 1,000 people to use my link or code that I'm going to put right here on the screen will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Try it out and see if you like it. I'll put my links down in the description box for Skillshare. When I was in Dollar Tree and found this rainbow sign, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. I knew it was gonna be perfect for a macrame wall hanging because rainbows are so popular right now. I'm sure you guys have been seeing them everywhere. Now this is a super simple project. All you're gonna need is some yarn of your choice. I really wanted some thick yarn. The yarn that I'm using, I actually purchased at the thrift store. I think one of them I may have gotten from Walmart. You can get yarn from Dollar Tree as well, but you can definitely find other places to buy it super inexpensive. Now, 
Now, whenever you're making a macrame piece, I always find that it's better to keep your pieces longer because you can always go back in and trim them a little bit. I'm gonna start in the outside edge. So I'm gonna pull my piece long and then I'm gonna hot glue it around the outside edge. Now, the key here is to make sure that you cover all of that wood because you don't want it to show through. I'm gonna keep cutting pieces about the same length at the bottom. I'm gonna bring them up and hot glue them next to the piece that I had just put in. Now, again, make sure that you're making these pieces tight together so you can't see any of the wood or sign behind it. That's one of the major keys when you're doing these macrame pieces. So I really didn't have much of a plan. I just put on yarn until I was happy with it. Then I switched to another color. and then I finished it off with a third color. Now I love macrame because you can really cater this to your taste, put as many colors as you like, or you know, just do it all in one color. Now, once I had all the pieces on there, I hung it up and I cut them straight across. You could also cut them at an angle if you'd like to do that as well. And I love how this looks. I even put it up on my backdrop. If you guys love creating high-end decor on a budget, make sure that you like this video so I know to do more like it in the future and subscribe to my channel. I post new videos on Mondays and Thursdays. Have you guys seen containers where people put in longer matchsticks or matchsticks with colors on them? I just find them really appealing. I feel like it's a really cute home decor piece that you can put out with your decor and I wanted to recreate it for less. So I went to Dollar Tree and picked up some of their clear shower rings. Next, I'm gonna glue these together. So the glue that I'm using is a glue that holds really well and it's gonna have to sit up overnight. So I added some glue around the edges and then put the rings on one by one. Now, once I had it stacked up, I set it to the side and let it dry overnight. Like I didn't do anything to it. When I came back the next day, the glue was bonded really well. Next, I spray painted it with two to three coats of a white flat spray paint. I wanted it to have like a speckledy stone look to it. So I found this spray paint at Walmart. It's called stone spray paint and it's so cool. When you spray it on, it just gives it this muckledy finish to it. So I just lightly sprayed that on the entire piece. From there, you can add a little bit of filler to the base of this. Then you can add in your matchsticks. I grabbed mine off of Amazon. I'll link them for you in the description box. And I think this looks so cute sitting out next to candles or other decor. Now, one of the biggest requests I get on Instagram is for wall art. And if you guys aren't following me on Instagram, you definitely should be. It's at Liz Fenwick DIY. I'm all the time posting DIYs. When I go shopping, I do a lot of the behind the scenes on there as well. So make sure you guys go follow me on Instagram, but I wanted to do a wall art piece for you guys in this video. So I needed a canvas. Now at Dollar Tree, their biggest canvas is I think 11 by 14, but it's not a thick one. So I wanted one that was a little bit bigger. A place that I have 
have found that you can get a really good deal is at five below. You can get a pack of two canvases that are 16 by 20, which I think is a great deal for five bucks. So I'm gonna use a 16 by 20 canvas. I'm also going to be using the twine that you can pick up in the crafter square. Now I believe for this project, I ended up using nine rolls of it. You could also get a larger roll off of Amazon, but I wanted to show you how you could do it with Dollar Tree items. Now this project, I have to say, took me a while to do, but it's super simple. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start by gluing your twine to the back of your canvas. Then you're just going to start wrapping it in one direction. You wanna make sure that your twine is really close together so you can't see the white behind it. Once you're happy with how far you've made it, just hot glue it to the back and cut off the excess. From there, you're gonna switch directions. So if you were horizontal, now you wanna add your twine vertically. And again, you wanna come back in and do it opposite every time. You want to kind of move around where you're putting it so that it's not always in the same location. What that's going to do, it's going to create kind of like a fun overlapping pattern. You'll just continue adding twine until you get the entire piece covered. This looks great in a grouping of wall art, or I think it can definitely stand on its own. But the cost of this wall art piece was around $12. Lately, I've been seeing a lot of paper mache bowls in high-end decor, and I wanted to try to recreate one on my own. So for this project, I'm gonna be using craft paper. I'm gonna start by cutting my craft paper down in strips. So I got a large roll from Dollar Tree, and I'm just gonna fold it over until I can cut it into smaller strips. Now, don't worry if your strips aren't perfect. They do not need to be by any means. You're also going to need some sort of bowl or shape to mold your paper mache around. So I just grabbed this plastic bowl from Amazon. I'm gonna wrap it with a trash bag and then tape it in place. Next, I'm gonna create my paper mache paste. So I'm gonna be mixing flour with water. You want your paste to be kind of be a thin consistency so that it'll hold up as a paste. Next, I'm gonna start by putting my strips onto my bowl. So I will dip them into the paste. Then I'm gonna wring off any excess paste and I'll add it to the outside of my bowl. I started down at the base and then I kind of wrapped them around the edges and then kind of finished it off at the top. Now with all paper mache, you're gonna have to let it dry overnight before you see how it turned out. I did realize that once it dried, it was a little too white, like I saw too much of the flower, and I wanted it to have more of that brown color. So I went back in and added another layer to the outside. This doesn't hurt it at all. It's just gonna actually make it more sturdy. and then I'll let that dry for another night. Once that dries, I can remove the bowl from the inside. To fill it, I just put some filler down at the base. You can use sacks of any kind, and then I'm gonna top it off with some Dollar Tree moss. And here's how my paper mache bowl turned out. Let me know in the comments what was your favorite project, and I'll talk to you guys in our next one. Bye.